hello friends welcome to fox you tech so today we're gonna see how to troubleshoot kubernetes pod in pending state so whenever we deploy out any kind of a pod in the kubernetes cluster or any open shift clusters we may face certain issues and we are checking how to troubleshoot all the issues mostly and a part of that uh, today we're gonna see what we have to do when there is when if the pod is going to the pending state right so before we jump into that let's understand about how the pod deployment happens as we know already but still i'll go through it so whenever you deploy a pod initially it set the status as pending and then the scheduler will be picked and the pod will be scheduled uh, to the respective nodes then it goes to the containers how many containers you have it wait for all the containers to start then the status will be changed to running right if the pods are completed successfully so it goes for the succeeded state if there is a, any kind of a error then it goes to the failed state or respectively there is a multiple errors we have seen in the previous takes so you can check that right or if something is showing completely unknown right so when the pod goes to unknown state so this happens mostly if the node is not responsible okay so that's a mostly it happens 99 percent if the pod is not sorry the node is not responding it happens or there is a, another issue the respective cube let is not responding to the scheduler okay so this is a complete phase of the pod deployment so let's check how to check uh, how to troubleshoot it or how to understand the pending state so if you are deployed any kind of a pod so first thing what you can do so you can just filter the pending parts and see what is happening okay so let's try to run the command to get this uh, pending parts only so this is a command you can use what your screen the screen let me open my terminal parallelly and i'll show you that so i have already typed the command so the command is ready i'm going to run this command i have tried one of the deployment for nginx and i can see the pods are in a pending state for a long time right so this is not expected we'll see in this tutorial what to do okay so uh, what is the possibility of the pods can be in a pending state one can be the insufficient resource you may request a certain resource from the pod request and limits and that is not matched with your nodes whatever available on the cluster second case maybe there is a tainted <clears throat> maybe the node is tainted and there is a toleration is need to be matched with a certain taints right so if that is not matched your pod won't be scheduled onto the node so you have to check your pod config deployment configurations and see is there any such a configuration you have to correct it next if there is any pod affinity and pod sorry node affinity and node selector has been set so you need to correct it or you have to try to match that uh, schedule things to the nodes okay <clears throat> and the dependencies so always whenever this kind of a matches like a first it's check the resources then it's check the times and then it's goes for the node affinity and selector if none of the things are defined so then it's goes for the dependencies let's say like your pod is expecting certain dependencies like a pbz's or some kind of a secret or some kind of a config maps so those all will be a dependency and if none of the things are properly defined sometimes the pod goes to the pending state so you have to validate it with the uh, checking the configurations and second thing is like uh, sometimes not always you'll get an image pull error whenever there is a typo sometimes if there is a connection issue or kind of a typo in your image name or problem with the registry right so those time also you may see the pod will be in a pending state and at last sometimes even the init containers can be may cause the issue like it may not complete it properly right so these are the possible scenarios your pods can go to the pending state okay so how to troubleshoot so let's take a step by step so let's assume there were 
we got a pod is in pending state and next first first thing what you have to choose we have to check in the scheduling part so what are the things we have to check in the scheduling part once you set your pod in a pen once you see the pod in a pending state you understand what is that pod is doing so why it's in the pending state is it a due to the pod issue or is it a problem with the scheduler issue right so we'll check that in the coming commands and once it's been checked next check image download is it the image whatever we given it's a proper or not we can check most of the case it won't be a thing but certain times we may make a mistake so to avoid that let's confirm it and uh, at last you have to check the dependencies what are the dependencies you have and is it all available onto the deployment right so then we have to we want to make that part to be running or sometimes we may need to do some kind of housekeeping work so let's go through that right okay the first thing very foremost so we need any issue if you face in the kubernetes so first thing what we'll do so we always try to do the try to understand what is what is the issue right so let's say like a, this is a pod which is in a pending for a long time i'm going to do the describe and see why it's in that pending state okay so i got a reason here so whenever if you are troubleshooting go to the events and see what is the reason right so i can see there is a three nodes and the one of the node tainted and the part doesn't have tolerated and two has a insufficient cpu so i'm not going to touch this tainted one because let it be as it is so whenever your case also same means you have to correct it if you it's applicable otherwise let's focus only on to the insufficient cpus so now we understand so this is how we have this is a issue right so next thing so <clears throat> so now you got it the details and you can see the events right but sometimes if you are using any kind of a cloud solutions or uh, aks certain things you may not see the events on the describe commands so that time what you have to do so you have to run the get events command so to see the uh, to see what is the issues so let's try this here and you can see here so you can get this details even here you can filter with the pod also if you wish okay so for now there is no need to be crap but as we have limited number of pods and we are going to check what is going to how do we can make sure this is not it is a correct or not right so next thing so now we understand so the issue with the pod resource uh sorry node resource and we are gonna see uh, what is the current allocation is given so even you can okay i'll come to this later so before that scheduler checking so we understand the issue right node wise so let's understand what are the nodes available at this moment so you can run node this kubectl describe nodes so it will give overall all the nodes details and with this you can just do the you can't read h and everything but we know what is happening here right so what is our understanding here like we are facing an issue with only the cpus right so now we should un see what is how to check the cpus only so this is a command you can use to understand about what is the current cpu usage so let me do the describe notes. I'm going to grab it with a name. <clears throat> grab with the CPU. CPU. Ah, oh, the mistake.
Vamos acá. Uh, okay, so I think I missed one color, yes. Right. So now we got to know. So there is a three nodes are there. One is a cube controller and two workers. And you can see the usage is more than requested. So this means the mode is already running out of more resources, right? So we need to be having clean it up or what we can do now. So there is a couple of things we can do. Either we can clean the nodes or something like whichever it's not applicable or whichever no need to be running there. Let's say like what are the parts are running. So there is we have certain parts are already running. So what we can do, we can check with a certain team. Is it the, all the parts are needed or not? If the parts are not needed, we can just clean it up. So otherwise, what we have to do, either we have to provision a new node or what we have to do. So we have to increase the current request, CPUs or lim memories limit to higher numbers right so a couple of things we can do so but the easiest way or the best way is housekeeping so if any node is consuming a more resources and if the there is a parts are running check is it a valid parts if the parts are no more need to be there we can clean it up so that will save us a lot of costing even and also enough resources will be used right so how to do that so let's assume there is a test pots okay so those pots can be clean it up so what i'm going to do so i'm going to run the kubectl get pots with the selector command to test okay let me grab it first describe Pivo latest. I'm saying there is a test part, so I'm just going to get the details about it. What is the labels it's using? So we can see it's using a test equal to true, right? So let's filter what are the things it's using with the iPhone iPhone selector equal to test equal to true. Sorry, what I did. Okay, I'm going to type over here. Selector, and you can see this all the part is consuming a test equal to true. So we can check with the respective team. So I have already checked with the team and they said these parts are no more needed. So I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so how to delete it? So it's so simple. So same command you can use to make sure only deleting the selected labels things. You can use this command. So it will delete you. Okay, so with this, what we achieved like a one thing we have achieved like housekeeping, the best practice we have achieved. And second thing, once it's been cleared, you can see the nodes will be having enough resource and that will be scheduled onto the respective nodes. Let's hold for a second. Um, it may take a little longer time because let me pause it and I'll come back. Okay, so you can see it now, the part has been deleted. And now when we check our parts, kubectl parts, and everything has been up and running right so this helped us better so this is how you can troubleshoot one of the issue like uh, if there is insufficient resources so in case like uh, if you can't delete any parts you have to go for L increasing the node increase the node size or the nodes like that you have to go for it okay let's understand this is for the cpu issue or the resource issue what if there is an issue with the scheduler okay so how to understand the issue with the scheduler? So you can do something like a group kubectl logs and see the log file of the kubes scheduler part and understand it. 
So it's mostly will be placed on the cube system namespace and go to the scheduler part and give the command. It'll be explain you about what is happening and what is the issue, everything, right? So that with that, you should be able to troubleshoot the, the issue if you whatever you are facing. Okay. So no, now let's say like if there is no node issue or there is no schedule issue, but there will be other issues like again. So check the images, how to check the image. Go to the kubectl describe and see the image name. How it is it a properly defined or not? So let me get an explanation where to check. Let's open this part and where we'll find the image name. So this is a container ID and this is the image we are using. If you made any kind of a typo or something like image registry error or something you are seeing in here or the kubectl get events check what is that image name you used is it a correct or is there any issue maybe we may wrongly place the versions or there will be a, some typos or something like a, the registry itself not defined or connectivity issue so you have to identify that and fix that issue right second thing is tent and toleration as i told so you can check the node wise and understand what are the tenants are there so let me explain you about that. Kubectl get nodes. So let's assume the first node having a tenant. Describe node. So when you see this configurations, you can read about the tenant details. We will get that. We have to check it. The annotations and labels. Right, so tents, sorry. So tent details, you can see it here and it schedule as no schedule. So you, until it matches the details, it won't schedule it. So you have to correct it as per your configuration. Either you can change these settings or you have to match with your other, or with the other nodes, okay? Or check the node affinity and uh, there is any anti-affinity or affinity rules. So we have explained in our previous blocks. I'll add those into the description. Please go through it and you can get a more clarity on it. Okay. Next is coming to the dependencies. As I said, the dependency is one of the critical thing we may face. So the other things maybe we corrected sometimes. So it's a well and correct. It's so easy for us and we are, we know that what we have to do. So the dependency will be like a little more time we have to spend. You have to check the PVCs. Is your deployment or the part required any kind of a PVCs? If yes, you have to check the PVC is properly mount, bounded or not. If it's in a pending state, you will your part also will be in a pending state or if it's a failed state also, it will be in the pending state. What is other dependencies, as I said, one is a config map. You have to check config map is properly defined and properly placed and properly mounted. Second thing is like a secrets. So the secrets also one of the key thing for any kind of a deployments because that has a lot of dependency with your containers or the pods and that may also cause the pod to be in a pending state. And the last state is a persistence volumes as we said. So you have to make sure the persistence volumes are properly mounted. Uh, you have to check all the dependencies properly and fix it by checking the kubectl describe command and understand about the pod and do or, or check the deployment file or stateful set file or any kind of a de definition manifest and see what has been written and uh, is it everything is satisfying. Then you can able to crack the things like you can fix your pending pod issue. Okay. So hope this video is useful guys. So that's it for now. And uh, I'll keep update if there is anything else it comes to related to the pending state or other troubleshooting articles. So the, we are working on the one long troubleshooting session. So uh, once it complete, we'll be publishing it. So until then, see you guys. Bye, take care.